Let's take a look at standard APR.6. This standard says that we should be able to rewrite simple rational expressions in different forms. Write A of X over B of X in the form Q of X plus R of X over B of X. Let's stop there for just a second. This A of X over B of X just means that we're taking a polynomial and dividing it by another polynomial. Then we're going to write it out in the form of its quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. But that certainly looks really complicated, but that's really all this is talking about in this standard, is that we're dividing polynomials and we're writing it out in the way that we've practiced with our quotient added to the remainder over the divisor if there is a remainder. So let's look at question number one. It says the expression can be written as Q of X plus R of X over B of X. And they gave us negative X cubed plus four X squared plus two X plus one over X squared plus three X plus one. They say that Q of X, R of X, and B of X are polynomials. And if the degree of R of X is less than the degree of B of X, which statement is true? So I notice that I cannot use synthetic division because the denominator, which is my divisor, is quadratic. It's squared. So you can't use synthetic division when that happens. You have to use long division. So let's go ahead and set up for long division. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 1 is divided into negative x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. So first I'm going to figure out what can I multiply x squared by to get negative x cubed, and that would be negative x. So I'm going to put that at the top and multiply by what's out front. So negative x times x squared gives me negative x cubed. Negative x times 3x is negative 3x squared. And negative x times 1 is negative x. But then we need to change all the signs in that row. Whatever they are, you got to change them. So then the first two cancel out. We can add what's left. So we have 7x squared because 4 plus 3 gives us 7. We have 2 plus 1x, which is 3x. And then we'll bring down the 1. And then we start over. We say x squared times what would give us 7x squared. And that would just be 7. So we're going to put plus 7 at the top. We're going to multiply it by what's out front and bring those down. So 7 times x squared is 7x squared. 7 times 3x is 21x. And 7 times 1 is 7. Now before we go any further, let's take a look at our answer choices. We see that we have negative x was our first part of our quotient, but all of them had negative x, so that doesn't eliminate any answers. But now we see we have a 7, <clears throat> and a and b have 7, but c and d had a 1, so we know that's already not part of our answer. So we're already down to a or b, just based on what we have so far. But let's keep going. So now that I've multiplied everything by 7, I need to change my signs in this row. So I have 7x squared will cancel out. I have 3x minus 21x is negative 18x. And then I have 1 minus 7 is negative 6. But now I can't multiply x squared to get something smaller. Like x squared times something would not give me negative 18x because that's a smaller term. So I know that this is my remainder. But then I look over here and they've just written it differently. They've taken out the negative and put it out front. But that means the same thing as what I got. So my answer would be A. Let's look at question two. It says if 2x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 5 is divided by x plus 2, which statement is true? So in this problem, we have a couple of options because our divisor is linear. So we can do long division, we can do synthetic division, and we can also do synthetic substitution. So I'm going to do synthetic division and synthetic substitution just to show you both. So we have 2 is our first coefficient. We have negative 1. We have a 1 and a negative 5. And then remember, we always make sure we have every power after our highest power. So we had a 3, a 2, a 1, so we're not missing anything. We don't need any zeros added, but always check for that. 
Bring down the 2. So then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 2 is 10. 1 plus 10 is 11. 11 times negative 2 is negative 22. Then negative 5 plus negative 22 is negative 27. So then that would give us 2x. And remember, it's always 1 less than what we started with. So 2x squared minus 5x plus 11. And then our remainder is negative 27. So when we look over at our options, that looks like B. <clears throat> so synthetic substitution is to take the root, which is still to change that sign, that negative 2, and just plug it into the function where your x is. So I'm going to say 2 times negative 2 cubed minus negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 5. And then let's pull up Desmos and have it help us finish all that up. So you just substitute carefully, but definitely use parentheses because you can get the wrong answer if you don't. With a negative, especially. But just to be on the safe side, it's just always a good idea to use parentheses. It will protect your negatives when needed. So I get a remainder of negative 27, which B was the only one with that option. So that would be a way that you could solve this since they did not have any answer choices that repeated a value for the remainder. All right, let's look at number three. It says, which expression is equivalent to 2x to the fourth minus x plus 2 divided by x cubed plus 1? So when they want to know things are equivalent, you could definitely just type this in Desmos and match them up. So let's do it the, the right way first, and then I'll show you that in Desmos. So I noticed that my divisor is cubic, so I cannot use synthetic division. I would have to use long division. So I'm going to set this up for long division. Now, I'm not going to add the zeros. I'm just going to put my terms in the places where they go. So I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So I have x cubed times what would give me 2x to the fourth. So I see I need a 2, and I need another x to make that work. And I put that at the top. I multiply by what's out front and bring those down. You also can tell that has to be right, because that's the first term in all of the answers. So that helps you certainly get started. So then I have 2x to the fourth, and I have 2x times 1, which actually goes with the next term I have anyway, so that works out. Then change my signs, cancel the first term out, and then I add up what's left. So I have negative 3x plus 2, but then I can't multiply x cubed by anything and get negative 3x because that's a smaller degree. So that is my remainder. But they've written it a little tricky because normally we would write plus and then we put our remainder over the divisor so it would look like this. But when you take this, I'm going to try to copy it and put it over here for just a minute and show you. They've tried to be tricky because we know it is not A or B, so we can go ahead and cancel those out. But if you notice, they've put a minus sign in between here, so we would have to factor out a negative from our numerator, and that would make it a negative and then change those signs and then that now looks like C is the best answer. So it's not that they turn out to be, it's not a positive 2. So like that's the part that's a little tricky, is you got to factor out the negative, and that changes it to be a minus 2. Because if you distribute this, it would become negative 3x plus 2. But anyway, they're just trying to be a little tricky. So what I said earlier would definitely help make sure you have the right answer because you can type this in Desmos and you can see which one is equivalent because when they're equivalent, the graph matches. So I have 2x to the fourth power minus x plus 2 divided by x cubed plus 1. And then I know my answer is C, so I'm just going to type that one and let me put it back the way they had it. Okay, so it was 2x minus, and then I'm going to put 3x minus 2 in parentheses so I can divide it by the x 
cubed plus one. And I notice like my graphs line up, but notice in the numerator, if I change that to answer choice D and make that a plus two, they don't quite line up. You can kind of see they're off. So that helps you check it. It could also help you solve it if no one's checking that you've shown any work. You could just type those in and figure out that it has to be C based on the fact that their graphs are equivalent. All right, so that's it for standard APR.6.